Today we have quite an interesting case study. We're looking for a function y of x such that if you differentiated k times or any integer multiple of k, the function repeats itself. So this is sort of a derivative periodicity thing we have here. And we need to start from some familiar territory. So let's check the case for k equals 1 first before diving into a general case. So for k equal to 1, we have the derivative of y with respect to x being equal to the function itself, which is pretty much the first differential equation you ever come across in a differential equations course. And we know exactly what function satisfies this. This is y equal to e to the x. Of course, there are constants of integration involved, but we're not interested in those right now. So this is the case for k equal to 1. But what if we move into the realm of k equal to 2? So if we differentiate y twice with respect to x, we expect to get exactly the same function back. Well, a function that works in this case is y equal to e to the negative x. Differentiate this once, you get negative e to the negative x, and differentiate it again, you get another negative sign that cancels out. So yeah, the second derivative would be the function y equal to e to the negative x. And when you move on to k equal to 3, I'm going to tell you to skip that headache for now. We'll come back to it when we're done with a general case discussion. So we're skipping this, and we'll jump right on to the case of k being equal to 4. So now we're interested in a function y such that if we differentiate it four times with respect to x, we get the function y back. And there are a couple of functions that would work here, and those are the trigonometric functions. So y equals cosine x and y equal to sine x are both solutions to this differential equation. But wait a minute, that means any linear combination of them is also going to be a solution. So we can say the y equals c1 times the cosine of x plus c2 times the sine of x, where c1 and c2 are both constants. But things get quite interesting once we plug in specific values for c1 and c2, and those specific values are c1 equal to 1 and c2 equal to the imaginary unit i which means the y equals cosine x plus i times the sine of x. And not only does this function work for the differential equation, this is also the complex exponential function e to the i x, which makes things very interesting because that means we're now going to reference complex numbers. And the question is, how can we use our existing knowledge of the cases k equals 1, 2, and 4 to construct a solution valid for k equal to any positive integer n. So let's stick with the exponential function choice for now. And recall that for k equal to 1, we had y equal to e to the x. For k equal to 2, we had y equal to e to the negative x. For k equal to 4, we had y equal to e to the i x. Now, can I find some kind of common structure to describe these three functions? Let's see. We have 1, negative 1, and i as the coefficients of x in the argument of the exponential function. So let's write this as e to the negative 1 to the 2 by 1 times x. In the second case, we have e to the negative 1 to the 2 by 2 times x. And in the third case, we have e to the negative 1 to the 2 by 4 times x. And yet, all of this checks out quite nicely. In the first case, we have negative 1 squared, which is 1, so it's e to the x. For the second case, we have e to the negative x. And for the third case, that of k equal to 4, we have the square root of negative 1, which is the imaginary unit. So that means we're on to something here. And let's generalize this by saying that in case k equals any positive integer n, we have y equal to e to the negative 1 to the 2 by n 
times x. Now let's see if this works. If you differentiate this thing with respect to x n number of times, what's going to happen? You have the nth order derivative on the left-hand side, and on the right-hand side, what happens to the exponential function? Well, the derivative of the argument just gets multiplied to it, right? So that means we would have negative 1 to the 2 by n appearing n times. So that means we can raise it to the nth power, and we have e to the negative 1 to the 2 by n times x, which is just our y function. But the coefficient in this case turns into, on cancellation, negative 1 squared, which is, of course, just 1. So this implies that our choice for the function y checks out quite nicely with the requirement of the differential equation. That is, the nth order derivative is, in fact, the function itself, which is really cool. But let's dissect the function y a bit more, because by the looks of it, we're going to need complex numbers here, so we could separate it into real and imaginary parts, which is, of course, going to be fun. So let me just pick a different color. We have y equal to e to the negative 1 to the 2 by n times x. Now, what exactly is negative 1 in the complex realm? That's just e to the i pi. We know that from Euler's beautiful equation. And that means we have negative 1 to the 2 by n being equal to e to the 2i pi by n. And we can separate this thing into real and imaginary parts, meaning that negative 1 to the 2 by n is, by Euler's formula, cosine of 2 pi by n plus i times the sine of 2 pi by n. Now we have y equal to e to the negative 1 to the 2 by n is this thing. That's x times the cosine. You know what? Just multiply the x. So we have x times the cosine of 2 pi by n plus i times x times the sine of 2 pi n. And using the properties of the exponential function, we can write this as e to the x times the cosine of 2 pi by n times e to the i x times the sine of 2 pi by n. And the second exponential function here can be further expanded once again using Euler's formula. So that means we have e to the x times the cosine of 2 pi by n times the cosine of x times the sine of 2 pi by n plus i times the sine of the sine of 2 pi by n, which is pretty interesting. So the function y here has a real and imaginary part, and both the real and imaginary parts will work as solutions of our differential equation. So this implies that we could have the function y equal to e to the x times the cosine of 2 pi by n, times the cosine of x times the sine of 2 pi by n. And we could also work with y equal to e to the x times the cosine of 2 pi by n times the sine of sine x times the sine of 2 pi by n, that is. So these are two possible solutions to our differential equation problem, which solve the case for derivative periodicity, which I thought was pretty cool. Let me know what you think in the, solu uh, in the comment section, but you know what, we're just going to call it the solution section for now. I think that would be nice. I think that would be pretty cool. Ah, uh, you know what, just call it comment section anyway. So if you have a solution, then for you it is the solution segment, solution sec section. I'm really, really bad with words. Math is a lot easier. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.